Here is a map showing Indo-European migrations, uh, roughly 2000 BC, it says 1700, but approximately. Uh, and what it is telling us is that in this moment between uh, 2000, 1900, 1800, this huge invasion of people who are, are coming from the uh, Russian steppe region, which would be sort of Ukraine nowadays, it would be sort of part of Ukraine, Georgia, um, and then moving west and southwest and directly south and southeast. So they're moving in all directions, but from that yellow core area that would be present day Ukraine. And that's where the Bronze Age charioteers begin. So that's the core area. On all these maps, you'll see a red or a yellow core area. And what we know about it and what we speculate about it has to do with that's where they explode out of, they erupt out of. And then you say, well, why, 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 why did they leave? Population growth, need more space, need more territory, need more grass for their horses. You know, if you've got a chariot, you want to get out and drive it, right? That's what we do with our cars buy a new Tesla, you want to drive around, right? In any case, the Bronze Age charioteers are on the move, uh, 1900, 1800, 1700 BC, and they come from that, from that yellow section there, the Ukraine, and they move in all directions, west, northwest, west, south, all the way into Spain, uh, directly south, Asia Minor, present-day Turkey, and southeast, all the way to India all the way to India. Now, they're moving through, of course, the great areas of bronze metallurgy because, of course, they're part of that. They're connected to that. And the key area is what's called the Pontic Steppe region. That word Pontic comes from the Black Sea name in Roman times, which was Pontus, which is the Latin word for bridge. Ponte, you know, that's the bridge in French and Italian and Spanish. And uh, in this case, they saw the Black Sea as the bridge to the inner uh, uh, Asian areas. And so it became known as the Pontic. And, and so that area there between Black Sea and Caspian Sea became known as the Pontic Steppe region. And that's the origin of these Bronze Age charioteers. In other words, there's a metallurgical connection to that. You already saw that on the map with all that great tin and copper. There's the horses. There's the uh, grass region where you can um, uh, have your horses eat and a connection to the west so you can sweep all the way west. So that's where it begins. And this map here shows you where they started and, and how they spread as their ability to uh, raise their horses, train their horses, move forward, all of this allowed them to spread, spread, spread further. And you can see everything is included, including a total conquest of Egypt. So at one point, the Bronze Age charioteers completely uh, take over Egypt and uh, all the way to India. So with their invasions and with their expansion, they carry their culture and their language, most especially, all the way to India. Now, what's the language? Well, the language is the core language called the Indo-European root language of all of European languages, with a few exceptions. Basque is one of them. Uh, but all the languages that we are talking about here for the next 10, 20 weeks, uh, Greek, Latin, and then all the European languages, Italian, Spanish, French, English, they're all Indo-European languages. They're all traceable back to these people, to these Indo-European invaders who brought their Indo-European language with them uh, and, and handed it over to these territories that they conquered uh, and then settled. Now, of the language they brought, uh, the core, the one closest to what they brought with them, was the language that grew in the land that received the strongest input of these invaders. And that land was Greece, because Greece sat right south of these areas, and it's a dead end. So, so if you swept in with hundreds of thousands of Bronze Age charioteers, 
And they sweep down from the Ukraine and they keep going and they keep going and they keep going and they just roar right over Macedon and down south. When they get to Athens, where can they go with the chariot? You can't just zip right out into the Aegean Sea. You stop. And so one of the things that happened was Greece received the strongest input of Indo-European language. And so Greek is the richest, strongest remnant of the Bronze Age territory invasion. So that's how Greece got its uniquely rich language with huge variety of uh, ability to say things. Latin is next, but not quite so flexible, not quite such a rich vocabulary, not quite so many declensions and changes of word that you can, and then on and on and on through all the other variations. The same language was carried into other places all the way to India, and so Sanskrit, which is the ancient Indian language back to the 2000s, is an Indo-European language. In fact, that's why the name Indo-European was invented, because it had to be called both European and Indian, because it, 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 it expanded over this huge amount of space. So that's what's called Indo-European. Now, we don't have like some Indo-European book. You know, we don't have a document that one of these Bronze Age charioteers sat down on a rock, you know, and wrote history of my voyage in my chariot, you know, by Mr. Bronze Age Smith. We don't have anything like that. So how do we know what Indo-European is? Well, brilliant language scholars began to speculate in the 18th century that there must be some language back behind the languages they knew, Greek and Latin, because there were all the similarities. So they figured there had, so they began doing these language studies that where they were searching for roots and they, and they just went back further and further and further and looked for parallels and now they have found them and they understand now we're, we're in the like thir 300th year of studying Indo-European and now they know a pretty good idea of what the core Indo-European language was like. So Indo-European invaders came to Greece. So that is the preface on Indo-European language, uh, quality and nature of Greece, and for us now, the great age of heroes in Greece, which emerges by 1600 and which is visible at a place in Greece called Mycenae. M-Y-C-E-N-A-E, Mycenae. And you can go there and see the remnants of this age of heroes, this Mycenaean age, all of which is the Indo-European Bronze Age chariot invader settlers who settled down. This is it. And we know a lot about it now. Archaeologists have been there for more than 100 years, so we have lots of books. Sir Arthur Evans is the father of all this archaeological uh, research that's been going on here. Here's the treasure of Atreus, which of course is a figure, as you know, in Greek dynasties. There's the mask of Agamemnon. Uh, here are some of the Bronze Age tools that were found there, beautiful bronze tools that have gold uh, embossed, gold cups, other beautiful gold work. All of this is part of the genius of the Bronze Age charioteers because they're all metallurgists. They all know exactly how to make these beautiful things. And so that world, the, the Age of Heroes, we call it, is roughly a 500-year period, something like 1600 BC down to the 1100s or down to 1000. And so that's it, 500, 600 years. Age of Heroes, mainland Greece, invaders come from the north, settle down, and create a new world.